You know, yesterday, the New York Times published what's essentially a hit piece on the idea that we can make artificial general intelligence. It's called Silicon Valley's Elusive Fantasy. And I almost never do direct responses to media pieces because I generally don't think it's productive. In this case, because of the prominence of that newspaper, and particularly because of the number of people who have reached out to me and essentially challenged the idea that AI can innovate, this needs to be addressed. We need to put to bed the idea that the advances of the last 24 months haven't mattered. And I'm going to do it not by taking apart the article in particular, but by talking about factual advances that recent AI has enabled us to make across a really, really wide range of fields. You may know some of these, I doubt you know them all. And so sit back, we're gonna go through quite a few here and I'll do them pretty quickly so we can get out in good time. Number one, Google has trained a reinforcement learning agent called AlphaDev uh, that has discovered sorting algorithms that humans have never written before. It makes up to 70%, it makes new routines that are up to 70% faster on short sequences and can ship mainstream C++ tool chains. Number two, MIT researchers fed 6,000 chemical structures into a deep learning AI model, and it surfaced an unexpected molecule that they've named Halicin. Lab tests have shown that it kills multiple pan-resistant pathogens where existing drugs fail, and it's opening an entirely new antibiotic class discovered solely by AI-led exploration. Number three, alpha fold models have predicted 200 million complete protein structures, many of which lacked any experimental data. The open database is already accelerating malaria vaccine design, it's accelerating antibody engineering, and is believed to have saved hundreds of millions of research years or hundreds of years of work in a wet lab environment. DeepMind's GNOME system has used graph neural networks to generate 2.2 million crystalline compounds, of which 380,000 are predicted to be stable. Lawrence Berkeley's lab was able to quickly synthesize 41 of those brand new compounds autonomously and validated that AI can invent and that a lab can build materials that humans did not imagine. IBM Research is coupling large-scale generative models with physics simulators to create high-fidelity battery digital twins. You're like, why do we need this? It enables us to slash iteration cycles for designing cathodes and electrolytes, and it lets scientists explore the chemistry of batteries in ways that were inaccessible with conventional lab-only workflows. Engineers at NASA Goddard have used evolutionary design software to grow alien-looking titanium mounts that are lighter and stronger and delivered in weeks, not months. And the shapes are so novel that the engineers themselves say they wouldn't have conceived them without AI-driven exploration. Each of these cases on the science front goes beyond pattern matching. The systems are searching an enormous, sparsely labeled solution space, and they're producing artifacts that outperform the best human benchmarks. These are not just statistical parrots, which is what the New York Times uses as a frame. They're engines of creativity in ways that humans are not. They, they use combinatorial creativity by leveraging compute across very large data sets that surpasses human intuition. This is falsifying a poorly sourced blanket claim like AI cannot innovate. I am the last one to say that the technology doesn't have limitations. I talk about that on here. AI has bias issues. AI has brittleness issues. AI is really hungry for data. These are real constraints. But the capacity for innovation is a proven fact at this point, and it is really frustrating to see media narratives continue to confuse people. I'm not just going to stick with science. You might think, has AI really delivered productivity gains? Something the New York Times claims it hasn't. UPS's route optimization engine uses machine learning to plan 55,000 driver stops each morning. Amazon has something similar internally. And UPS is reporting that their company now saves 100 million miles and 10 million gallons of fuel every single year because of AI. The claim that systems can't understand images, audio, and text together is exactly what ChatGPT 4.0 does and has been doing for a while. 
the model can identify a handwritten math problem on the board from a camera phone, talk the user through it and respond naturally. I myself have used it for code where you point it at some code and talk it through. It's exactly what the Times claims it can't do. Current models don't match humans on serious reasoning tasks. That's another claim I hear. Look, that's just not going to hold up. Like you, you can pick whatever bar you want. Uh, literally, the uniform bar exam is one. Uh, Chat GPT four, an older model, scored ninety percent on that bar exam. O three does even better. I will be honest with you. Some days, O three feels like it's smarter than I am. AI hasn't produced concrete medical breakthroughs is another claim. We've talked about that one. We've talked about the antibiotics. Another one that I think is a breakthrough in bedside manner. A lot of studies show that diagnosis uh, is more accurate and bedside manner is better with AI. Sometimes with AI alone, not with doctors, because they do test doctor only, AI only, and doctor and AI. Oftentimes the AI, which may only be chat GPT-4 because these models need to be peer reviewed, still do better than the doctor. AI hasn't learned new physical tasks. That's just not true. We're getting real breakthroughs in robotics. If you haven't seen the videos of the robots that pack uh, a refrigerator or the robots that unscrew bottle caps or the robots that pack lunch boxes they were never explicitly trained for, go look them up. It's real. Uh, in fact, a number of different robotics firms do this. Frankly, China's probably ahead of us on this one. The claim that AI hasn't improved accessibility for disabled users. I know friends of mine who are disabled who use AI as a hack every single day. Uh, and uh, as an example of something that's coming quickly, uh, did you know that like Apple is actually launching a magnifier for Mac where you can strap your phone to a laptop and it will literally magnify any part of the room so a low vision user can pipe any part of the room they're looking at into a Mac and actually in increase the size and use it the way they want to? Frankly, you can do that now with ChatGPT too. It's not just an AI, it's not just a Mac feature, it's an AI thing. You can walk around with your phone and ChatGPT and like use the camera to look and have a conversation. You can do that with live translation translation. Statistical parrots, which is something that the New York Times claims, do not have live translation capabilities, but people are using ChatGPT to live translate between languages now. And so it's not, it's not that questioning or skepticism is out of place. It is right to ask really hard questions of AI, but I would prefer that we ask better quality questions, questions that are reasonable given what we know about AI progress. For example, why is it so much easier for AI to make progress in scientific fields than it is in other fields? By the way, I think the answer is likely because correctness is something that is provable and LLMs are fundamentally a branch of machine learning and machine learning does better with correctly provable solutions since you can drive reinforcement learning off of it. There are real answers for those real questions. There are other questions that are harder to answer, like how do we handle ongoing data availability as models get hungrier and hungry for, hungrier for data? How do we understand how work and startup dynamics change as these models come into the workplace? These are real questions. I talk about them a lot. I think they're worth threshing out in detail, and they're much worth they're much more worth column inches than repeating tired claims that are factually incorrect at this point. I would really, really love to have media conversations that do not drive misinformation into my inbox. I am tired of people who are rightfully confused reaching out to me saying, hey, Nate, can you explain? I, I, thought, I thought that you said AI was innovative and look at this media publication saying it's not. That is confusing. It totally makes sense you'd be confused. It's not on them. It's on the media to be more responsible about this. We need to take the idea that AI is innovative seriously.